Hello, my name is Joseph Carlson, and this is the Tabletop Experiment, episode 22, Dragonlance Part 13. I am joined once again by Christian, who's playing Swami, our uh, sorcerer. Uh, Todd, who's playing Uriel, is running late. And Jesse, who's playing Martok, will not be here. But Fade is here, who's playing O'Grady, our druid. How you doing, Fade? Good. Someday we'll see your face and be able to game with you, so that'll be good. Um, so before we had all these technical issues, uh, nobody had any questions. So we'll just, I'll do a really quick recap and we will pick back up where uh, we were before. So just to recap, you guys, uh, Swami and O'Grady had decided to go to the bad croissant place called uh, Marlin's Croissants. You decided to go there. Uh, it was terrible. I made both of you roll a constitution saving throw to uh, fail eating a croissant. O'Grady, if I remember right, you said they were great. Uh, they were good. They were good. So you're good. So good. Good, good, good. Okay, so you you were just going to get a croissant, right? Uh, yeah. And then we came back and then, uh, what was it? Uh... The other two are their names. Sorry. Martok and Uriel. Yeah, Martok and Uriel gave both me and Swami a good croissant when we came back. I remember that. And Swami, you again were very mad. Uh, or you, you you said these suck or whatever, right, Swami? That's what you said. Terrible. Yeah. The ones, the ones that w from the bad, from the bad place, from the bad croissant place. Those are horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it was great. I mean, to back up a little bit farther, uh, Swami, you and Uriel had decided to go through the training to be... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys had decided to go through the training and um, to be mages of high sorcery, at least to go through the Tower of High Sorcery, to go through the test to see if you can make it to be a mage. Uh, and then Martok had decided to sign on to the Knights of Salamnia. Um, to kind of go back in time, he had, he basically, when he signed the document, I forgot to add this, it was in my notes, and I forgot to do it in the session, but he basically had, um, once he signed, they gave him a scroll, Trinity, the commanding officer, gave him a scroll to be like, take this to Holt, if Holt gives you any business, give this to him, and then he gave him a green sash with the, uh, to like a belt sash for him to put around his waist that had the, uh, the, the crest of the Knights of Salamnia. So any knight would see that he is literally green and that he is a squire of the Knights of Salamnia so they can order him around if it's within reason. So that's kind of what happened. You guys had it back and forth with a shopkeep who is very spicy. I don't know how you guys felt about her. Um, but yeah, then you guys had the croissant. You made the constitution saving throw. Everybody, uh, both Uriel and uh, Martok decided to go to the forges. At least Martok did. You guys kind of all met at the same time, like converged in town at the forges. And you guys are kind of outside the forges right now. Uh, is there anything? I mean, you guys can talk while you're on the road, but you're kind of coming up right to the forges. Uh, I mean, if you guys want to talk amongst each other, you can. Um, I know O'Grady was kind of quiet, so I don't know if he wants to say anything or... Yeah, just continue to keep to myself. Again, Swami, you can ask him questions if you're like, hey, wh why are you so tall and green <laughs> and quiet? You can do that. You can ask him <laughs> things, you know? Um, oh, I, I'm never afraid to ask questions. No, I know. Um... Was there anything, so since Martok and uh, Uriel, I mean, they the players actually aren't here. Martok just goes and checks in with Holt. They have a conversation. Uh, they go in, I'll show inside here a bit. They go in the, uh, I'll show a Tailspire. And I'll, sp I'll uh, cut the screen here. If you go in and cut this down. You can see inside. So Holt is talking to uh, Taria, who does the weapons. And uh, Swami, was there anything in particular you wanted from the, the um, 
forges or were you just going there because Uriel and Martok thought it was a good idea? I wanted a long sword. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know, you're not proficient with the long sword. You can use it. You just won't get any bonuses. That's fine. Okay. It's, in a, um, it's a, a type of, I'm in a pinch type of thing when they're too close. Right. You. Okay, so a long sword. All right. Um, so this, if you were to look at the screen right here, I'm going to do a shine a little light. You see this? You can move your character up here if you want, Swami, since you now have control of your character. Um, you, um, this, actually, this door here, you open it up, and you can go inside, and this is where they do weapons. And, uh, so you go in, and you see Holt kind of murmuring to whatever. Uh, I'll put, uh, Martok's, um, mini in here, because he's, he's checking in with Holt, who's over here, so I'll do that. Uh, oh, Grady, I know the forges are, aren't really your scene, but is there anything you want? You know, you heard, obviously, the group was going to the forges. Um... Is there anything you think you could need out of the forges? Any kind of like tools or weapons? Um, Even though you don't really use steel weapons, I mean, you know. I was gonna say maybe maybe armor, maybe armor or something. Uh, you're really only proficient with like leather armor and stuff like that. You're a character because uh, yeah, you are like yeah. a woodland creature. So, like in some of the old texts, to be above board, there's a lot of writing about how druids don't like like metal weapons. They don't like metal armor. They think it's like kind of an affront, you know, you've ripped something out of the ground and forged it into something. You can make up your own mind how you feel like that. You just know it feels heavy on you. O'Grady himself, okay. like when he puts, because you can turn into a bear or like an armored creature, you know? And so That's it's true. Like, I was, you're like, I was why, thinking about that. You're like, why would I put all this incredibly heavy stuff on me when it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I don't, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'll just tag along with the group. Um... You can both you guys give me oh crap oh my phone can both you guys give me an initiative roll Swami so, I don't want to break your heart there isn't going to be comment I just want to see who's going first so calm down drink I, a soda I just did mine did you see it uh, it's coming up mine's loading it's a little slow eight yep let's see what I get Ooh, let me get that 15. You got a 15. Okay, I just saw it come up right when you said that. My internet's slow, even though I'm like a foot from my router. I don't know how that works. But anyway, um, so we'll go with you first, Swami. Um, you kind of go in, and, you you know, it's just the smell of the forge. I've said you lived in towns and stuff before, so you've, you know, this is like not weird to you, you know. But um, you see Martok in there. He's talking to Holt. Holt is laughing at him because he sees the green sash hanging from Martok's uh, belt. So he's like, well, 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 look, the prodigal son returns. And Holt is having a field day. He's like, man, there's so many ditches that need to be dug. And he goes over there and he puts his arm around Martok. And he's like, God, man, you better find like three shovels because you're going to wear the first two out. And Martok just silently hands him the scroll that Trinity handed him, and Trinity is the commanding officer of that branch of the knights, and you see him go, what is this? And he opens it, unscrolls it, you know, like unrolls it, looks, and you see his face just sink as he reads it more and more, and he goes, God damn it. All right, well, you know what? If you and Trinity have something you got to do, go ahead and do it, but man, when you come back, I'm going to make you dig so many ditches. I mean, you're basically on loan to dig like four or five ditches. I don't know. I haven't even made up my mind. But, hey, if Trinity wants you to do it, I'll allow you to do it. Uh, you kind of walk in. You, like, hear the whole exchange. You see this dwarf in the corner. I don't know if you guys can hear the music, but there actually is a little pounding of uh, steel yeah, and here. stuff. Is it too loud yeah. or is it good enough? No, like, perfect. Okay. That's good. I was trying to keep it low, but it just gives you that atmosphere of, like, you know, it's just like they're pounding at the forges and they're kind of on the edge of town. Mm -hmm. So, um, Swami, you said you wanted a long sword. So, like, you mm -hmm. see this dwarf pushing, you know, a blade into water and you hear the steam and everything. And he, he's like, well, uh, it looks like any, like, he, he's got, like, one eye is kind of closed and the other one's a little open. He's like, looks like I got myself, uh, and he, like, looks up and down. He goes, oh, uh, uh, a dandy a bit. What, what, can, can I help you with something? And he puts 
you know, the sword on like a drawing rack and he turns over. He's like, can I help you? He looks right at you, Swami. He's like, you know, he's kind of eyeing you up. He's like, and? That depends. That depends. Can you make me what I need? He's like, if it's got a, a blade with it and a handle, I can make you whatever you want. I would like the strongest, more firm longsword that you can make. Are you yeah. up for the task? He's like, ah, oh, special order. Well... He goes, do you have uh, any kind of uh, script with you from any kind of organization, or is this on your dime, son? When, he's, when, when he says script, does, is that like a, basically like a voucher? Right, so like, you know, the Knights of Salamnia gave you a voucher to go get your armor repaired for free. That's what, yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, what, what, he's, that's what he's saying. Oh, like, is this, is this on someone over. else's dime or your dime, yes. basically? No, I'll hand that over mm -hmm. so that I can get the sword for free. So uh, I'm pretty sure they handed you, me one, right? To, to, to have they hand you one for the armor. They didn't hand you one for any uh, weapon acquisitions. And the mages yeah. wouldn't really hand you one for a blacksmith. They may no, hand you I, one for like an yeah, apothecary no, or. Uh, oh, but it's. I thought that I, would, I really thought that I was gonna be able to like use the voucher for the armor. But oh, I mean, oh, you mean for the longsword? Yeah. Uh, let me go here. I'll see. I mean, like, I don't, I don't need. Well, you armor. can, you know, you can, you can talk to him and everything if you think you can try to persuade him or. Yeah, let me try um, to do that. Let me try to do that. I'm gonna try to persuade him to let to take because I don't need armor. No, but I'm you need a weapon, guy. right? He's a yeah, weapon guy. I, the armor guy's across yeah. the street. And you want a long sword, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. He's like, you know, are you with an organization or are you just doing this on your own? I mean, I'll fill whatever order. The gold spends the same. Ah, and he like slap, you know, like punches your arm. You want to try to persuade uh, uh, him? Yeah, I'm going to try to persuade him. I'm going to let him know, like, I'm not really with them, but I have this voucher to get an armor set made for me. But I'm a mage, so I don't really need an armor. He's so like, well, the to... armor is across the street. I'd mostly do weapons. So if you want armor, you can totally go see my uh, sibling. But, you know, uh, he's pretty crap at what he does. I'm just kidding. And he, like, slaps your arm again. <laughs> Hi, so he seems pretty cool. So I'm like, so would you be willing to take this voucher? to and, Instead of an armor, can I get a long sword? Well, the only you voucher you have is when you went to the last thread to get your armor repaired. So you're you're holding up like a basically an ex, you know, uh, uh, what are they? I can't even think of the word. Like a, um, it's like an expired voucher for a completely. You're basically holding up a coupon for a different business in this uh, business. Going, I got yeah. a coupon for Baskin and Robbins, but I'm in Walgreens right now. You know, it's like your thing right now. Of like, can I do it? I mean, hey, okay. you can try to roll a persuasion. Let's try to do that. Let me roll this persuasion. Let me see where we. Mm -hmm. Nine. Nope, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> You're like, I got yeah, this, and you see him just, you know, the one eyes that's closed. He like squints with the other one. He goes. You're actually at the wrong, because he's like seeing you kind of like, you know, you're holding oh. the con the script out, and he's like, okay. he's like, we'll that's that's kind of for the wrong. You know, it happens with age. I'm like over 200. I get sometimes your eyes get bad and you think you're in the right place, but like that's actually for the last thread. That's down the block. He starts giving you directions. He's like, just go through the crowd, <laughs> turn left, turn right. That guy will get you set with a suit of armor. And then I ask him, how, how many gold? What for, it cost me for what, what? What are you looking for, for son? A long sword. A long sword. Oh, I mean, I'm running a special right now. You know, the military, the Knights of Salamnia are running through. They're they're just spending money left and right. I charge you twelve gold pieces for a pretty good long sword. In fact, I got one over here. And he like walks up. You see this? He like walks up over to the wall, pulls out a long sword out of the wall. You know, it's like it's pretty good. And he brings it over, and he does this flourish where he doesn't hit you, but he brings it up right at like your head. And he's like a foot away, and then he brings his other hand over to like present it to you. He's like twelve gold. He's like I, I I just finished it two days ago. It's pretty good. Hmm. Hold on. Let me look at this arcane focus thing again. 
By the way, I think it'd be pretty neat if your arcane focus was a fucking long sword. I just want to say I'm that. Saying. I just want to say that for That's the record. Saying, right? Like, can he use it? No, he just holds it and is like, by the power of Grace Skull, and he casts like magic missile and shit. That's what I was thinking to ask, because like, I have it in my inventory. I would say it's a little bit heavy for you and cumbersome, but if you wanted to do like a short sword or even a dagger or something, like, you know. I mean, we could do whatever, but sometimes you need both hands to cast spells. There's a feat that allows you to hold something in one hand and cast a spell. Like, we could talk about that. We could talk about it. You know what? You know what? A dagger. A dagger and the arcane focus. Like an art. Be... Like he could. Are he kind of sees you? He's like, you know. I don't mean any offense, son, but, like, this just seems not really your style. And he hangs it up on the wall, and off the wall he pulls this beautiful, like, curved ceremonial dagger. And it has a red uh, ruby, like, on the, at the end of the hilt. And it's actually, the ruby is, like, pointed like a double-sided dagger kind of, you know? Like, you could stab mm -hmm. somebody with the hilt of it. And he's like, and you could see that, like, the... The hilt and the, you know, the, the tongs off the side, you know, the guard is gold. So this thing is like just pure iron and then a little bit of gold and then like this red ruby. He's like, I think, and he like twirls it with his hand. He's like, this, this could be a little bit more of your style, you know? So uh, I don't want to judge you though. If you, if, if you think you want the long story, we go back to that. But I, I think not only one does this one pack a punch, but... I mean, it looks good on someone like you, and he kind of looks at your ropes. Because remember, you just got your armor repaired from uh, the last stitch from the the uh, tailor there. So, like, your armor looks resplendent. There was extra stitching. You got extra hit points from that. And so this just, like, it, it like if you're looking for bling for an outfit, this looks great. Uh, and I ask him. I ask him. Um, Are you experienced on combining magical items with your weapons he like squints and he looks up he's like why well, you know i don't want to disrespect my own skill son but i try to do one thing well and that's make a good blade uh there's other people in the world that can add magic to it and things like that i'm totally fine with that when you leave my shop this is yours You know what? We'll take it. He's like, how it'll much? be this. Oh, how much? He says yeah, twelve gold, the same price as the as the long sword. He goes, the jewel's a little bit more, but the dagger's a little bit less, but it's fine craftsmanship. And he holds it out and he holds his hand, you know, palm oh, we'll up. Take it. You take it. Give him the money. Yeah, that's yeah, twelve gold. So you're kind of going through all this. So fade, you are outside and you're you're kind of out here. And I don't want to. I don't want to break the. You're looking at the stream, right, Fade? Yeah. What's it, what's it? So you see this guy like walk up, and he has like. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy's holding like I think a stein or a hammer. He's a smith. But this guy, I'm just doing it as like a person. He comes walking down the path. He has like burlap, almost monk robes on, and he's walking through, and he has a a walking stick, and it looks a lot like it's as tall as your walking stick. And you see the, the cloaks drawn over, and he's walking through, and he stops right in the front of the, um, right in front of the smith, and he looks towards the smith shop, you know? I don't want to do reverse my cameras, whatever. He looks okay. towards the armor smith, and he's like, hmm. And then you see him look towards you, and he's like, oh, I think I know you. Do I know you? And he pulls his hood back. And you see what would be like a Norseman. You know, he's got big, like big hair, beard, like kind of a gray, like a dirty blonde, but it's like braided. He actually looks really clean and it's really well kept, but you see his robes mm -hmm. are really plain. He's like, do I know you? I think I know you. Is your name O'Grady? Uh, I suppose it is, but who's asking? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, my name's Taruk. I'm, uh, I just, I'm a traveler, much like yourself, uh. You know, I stick to the roads a lot, but I think I saw you about, uh, you know, four weeks, four weeks ago. Um, 
You know, you were trying to find a hovel. You know, my timelines are all off, but it, but it was a while ago. You were kind of looking for shelter. There was a big rainstorm. Uh, give me... Uh, Fade, give me um, a history check for me. All right. Oh, my God. Okay. You, nice. you remember, like, kind of, like, as we were doing, like, your pregame stuff and, you know, the stuff before the streams... You do mm -hmm. remember in that rain when you were looking for shelter, you, I mean, it could have been the rain, it was like torrential, you know, monsooning. You think you maybe saw somebody like in the, you know, in a group of trees or like along the river walking. It didn't look like they were following you. I mean, with your passive abilities, I'm not going to make you roll. You didn't get that sense of dread that they were following you or meant you any harm, but you just saw it was like another fellow traveler on the road. Uh, maybe you guys would have nodded to each other. You don't really remember. I mean, you got a 20, but like, uh, it was just kind of like you, like maybe another hermit that didn't want to be bothered, you know? And so yeah. you kind of, you guys just kind of went about your way and you would see them cause they were in a robe, you don't know, you know, like a burlap, whatever. Uh, you would kind of see them throughout just kind of like walking along, uh, not really paying any mind. So this might be that person. Of course, they recognize you, so it might... You know, you wear robes and stuff, but you obviously stick out a little bit more being, you know, a fur wog and everything. Um, you know my name. Oh, I, you know, I, um, I don't know. I'm just really good at guessing things. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I just, um, I think I saw... And then he brings his hand out to shake your hand. I'm not going to shake his hand. He's like, I understand. He's like, I, I don't know who is and he knows my name. Mm. He's like, I'm on, second, you guys. Oh, you're fine. He's like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be so forward. I just, um, you know, and he, he's like, I, um, hang on, hang on. And he like reaches in his, uh, like reaches in his, uh, belt or whatever and pulls out, um, um, a bunch of berries and he's like holding them in his hand and he's like I was I was just um you know I was kind of hungry and I, I I just I I get nervous sorry and you see in his hand like in his you know like in his palm here with the uh you know the I'm trying to show the camera with the lines in your hand you know or whatever you see like that sign in druidic you know you guys look at sticks you look at the way the sun is. It's not only like explicit runes that are written. Sometimes it's it's reading the signs of nature. You see that it, it has your name in like the literal palm of his hand. And he's holding out these berries. He's like, I'm sorry. I I get really nervous. I don't really talk to a lot of people. I get really forward. Uh, sometimes I say things I don't mean to say. I'm, I'm really sorry. And you see his hand kind of start to shake a little bit. And he's like, I... It's just an offering. If you want to bury, it's fine. I'm sorry. I'll just, I'll, I could leave though, if you want. But he keeps his hand out for a couple of seconds. Do you want to grab one of the berries? Yeah, I'll take one of the berries. No, I'll apologize for being rude. Uh, you kind of get this sense that like, um, again, with all your passive abilities, you kind of get this sense that this is like another druid and he's just like you, you know, you kind of smell the earth off of him. You, you just get that mm -hmm. feeling that he is just a, you know, another what do they call that like a soulmate in a way like he is just like you wanted to be left alone decided to come into town and is you know he's um he's a little out of sorts there's a lot of noise around yeah. you know a lot of culture shock and he just saw somebody he literally saw on the road and was like excited so you take a berry yeah i'll take a berry do you eat it or do you just take it and like put it in your pouch or no i'll eat it I'll take it and I'll eat it. Uh, you get two temporary hit points. All right, nice. He's like, I'm sorry. And he puts the rest of the berries back. He goes, uh, my name's uh, Taruk. I, I, I'm, I'm like you. I just like traveling the road. And um, it's just, I, I, I just saw, uh, you know, somebody that I could recognize in town. And I just kind of freaked out. This is a lot. And, you you know, you hear the forages. There's obviously the noise of the city. I don't want to turn the effects on on Tailspire. Um, yeah. Swami, give me a perception check while you're in the forge. Bam! What Bam. happened? What happened? 
know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, um, it's about as much perception as I have. Yeah, you like it? That wasn't good. That was, I was actually shocked at how bad that was. I was like, it's got to be a little better, right? Um, <laughs> Swami, you're done with your whatever. You can move if you want to. You want to leave, or do you want to keep talking to this guy? Or no, we out. As you come out, you see Taruk, and you've seen Taruk before. Um, you know, you know who he is. Uh, he gave you gifts and everything. Remember, and you see him talking to O'Grady and giving him like a berry. You kind of like, I'm gonna move your guy. So you just kind of like come out here. <laughs> you ran out. Oh, hey, what's up? Like, you just kind of come out. One. You have your dagger. And you see him here talking to um, uh, O'Grady. I should probably move the screen. So there you go. Yeah, you see him talking to him. Do you say anything? or? Yeah, I said, let me get one. Let me get one of those. He's like, oh, he's like, I know you. Swami, right? You know exactly who he is. And uh, give me a perception okay. check again, Swami. He like swings around and gives you a berry. I get another three, man. Okay, eleven. He winks at you when you take a berry. Oh, oh, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's slow your roll there, buddy. (laughs) Uh, You get two temporary hit points if you eat the berry. Two temporary hit points. Yeah. Boom. There we go. I got eight now. Um. Oh, Grady, you see him kind of light up when he sees Swami. He's like, I, I know Swami, right? And he looks right at you, Swami. I he's said, like, yeah. He's like, are you guys are you guys together on the road? Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. Wow. He says, wow, this is great. Uh, I, Swami, do you know O'Grady at all? Or, like, you guys just met up? I, you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I um, Listen, Swami's an old friend. Uh, isn't that right, Swami? Mm-hmm. He says, you know, and, and I like to give all my friends stuff. Um, I'm just one of those people, you know. I've been on the road a long time. And he, uh, you know, O'Grady, you don't have much, but you you have a backpack, right, and everything. You know, you got all your stuff on your back. And he's yeah. like, that looks so cumbersome. Listen, 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 listen. Let me give you this. And he pulls out, like, in his robes, he reaches in and pulls out a satchel. And he hands it to you. He's like, if you're a friend of Swami's, you're a friend of mine. Take this. And he hands you a satchel. All right. Well, I will accept it and say thank you. And uh, so if you go to manage inventory on your character sheet, yeah. you can do that. Satchel. Click in uh, bag of holding on the search bar. Should be bag of holding. Uh, right here. I got it. Click add to equipment, basically. All right. I got it. So basically what a bag of holding is, it can be any shape, uh, anything. I just make it a satchel because I think it looks cool. It basically is a dimensional mm-hmm. pocket that you hold on you and can hold up to 500 pounds. So you oh, can, nice. You can put your backpack in there and all you have is this little satchel on you. Um, you could put swords nice. in there. Again, it's up to 500 pounds. So you can put everything up to 500 pounds into your bag of holding. Oh, yeah. Well, then you know what? I will give him twenty five gold. <laughs> you like hold your hand out. He's like, "What? What is? What? What are you doing? What is that? What is that?" Well, I, that's that's what I got to offer. No, no, no. You're a friend. I'm just as a friend. I'm giving this to you. Listen, I know what it's like because you see, he has nothing except his robes and his walking stick, and he's like, "I, I have nothing except what I wear and my little pouch here with like some berries in it that I eat." Uh, give me uh, a nature check. Well. Yeah, we'll say nature check. Give me a nature check, uh, Fade. Oh, no. No. I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll say since you're one of the old ones, this is just a, a pouch of good berry, which I think I told you what good berry was. Basically, it's just a berry. You eat it. You don't need to eat it for the rest of the day. And it basically gives you one hit point. And if someone is injured and they're, like, on the ground, you can give it to them. They get one hit point. Um, okay. and he's like, this is all I have all day. I don't really need much. And then he, you see him look at your staff and his staff looks a little bit gnarled and more weathered, but he's like, I, that staff, I mean, I don't want to be forward, but I think, could I trade you staffs? Because I think your staff 
is a little bit worn and mine's a little bit new. Wait, wait. Is it new? His, uh, give me an arcana check this time. Swami, do you want to do anything or are you just letting these people kind of talk amongst themselves? Yeah, I'm listening. I just want to listen to see what's going well, on. So with your yeah. 20 arcana check, which is very good, there's something about the light, like this, the, even the light of the city that's like you're near the forges, mm. it's smoky. The, the staff kind of glistens a little bit. Like there's just a little bit of like, you can just tell some old magic on the staff. Like a little bit of like something falling off it or whatever. Can I do like an investigation check on this staff? Well, what I, uh, I mean, your arcana check says it all. To get it uh, properly identified, you would have to go to like a wizard and be like, tell me what the properties of the staff are exactly. Okay. But you okay, know that it. this is, with your arcana check of a 20, you know this is magical in, pro in, in nature. So he's, he's basically trading you your shitty walking stick for like a magical staff. All right, well then I'll accept the trade. He's like, oh, and then he, he like, you know, hits your staff down on the ground. He's like, it's a good, uh, good staff. This is oak. This is pretty good. Um, just to let you know, that has a couple of extra properties. If you're ever in a bind, uh, you may be able to, um, ah, you know what? I don't want to ruin the surprise. Anyway, uh, you just, uh, you guys, uh, Swami, it was good seeing you. And he like slaps your back, Swami. Uh, he's like, you guys enjoy you know, town, it's kind of loud here. I don't really like it. But whatever you guys are doing, I don't know where Martok and Uriel are, even though I left Uriel's thing right behind, whatever. Uriel's in the other forge. <laughs> but he's like, you know, you tell them it was good to see you too. I'm glad you guys, you know, are friends. That's really great. You know, if I'm traveling on the road to see you guys, I might, I might ask for something. I might ask for help or something like that. But you guys, you know, you oh, have a good... I get it. He's like, All right, well, hold on. Before you take off, I don't like surprises. Can I do a persuasion check at least or something to like try to persuade him to tell me what's up with this staff? Oh, yeah, of course. All right. I know it's not. I'm not very proficient in it, but I'm going to try. Well, I mean, you can get a nat 20. Yeah, I'm right. No. <laughs> you don't even have any pluses. It's just a uh, sick. You're like, so what's going on with this staff, basically? And he's like, you'll find out when you need it. He's like, just remember, with friends like these... And he gives let you the do, let me try. Let me try. Let me try. Uh, give me an arcana story. check, please, sir. Swami with your arcana. Uh, Holy crap. So, Swami, Swami, by you looking at the staff, it's like you laser vision into the staff. This thing can turn into a thorn whip, which is a spell that is used to grapple or subdue people. So he That's can crazy. activate it and whip it on people, like grapple with them. And then you can turn it back into a staff. And allow it and uh it, it basically is a magical weapon so if creatures can only get hit with magical weapons this staff counts oh. you know some weapons if you you know if you hit some creatures with normal weapons it does nothing you need a magical weapon this acts as a magical weapon uh, i tell i tell grady that you just like because because uh you say that and like so I'll, swami i'll say this to like complete this he He's like, well, I'll see you guys on the road. And he gives you, like, the finger guns. He's like, you guys have a good day. And he walks away. And as he's walking away, that's when Swami's like, hey, man, this is pretty, your staff's pretty good. Yeah. Well, all right, I was about to try to intimidate that dude to tell me, too. I don't know. <laughs> um, that sounds like. Swami, do you, do you want to tell him the deal, or do you just let him? No, no I want to tell him. I'll tell him. I'll well, tell about him, Taruk, yeah. about the whole deal and all that and all, you know? Yeah. Like, go ahead and tell him. You could tell him about his staff that's what i'm saying well no i mean about taruk so you know who taruk is you you know you met him early on he gave you your bags of holding you know he's uh important do you remember all that from the beginning no yeah. i do not that's, oh that's why i write this session notes up anyway so Faye, just to let you know um <laughs> as as taruk like walks away you see he glints in light a little bit you get like this really like it's one of those things where you just feel kind of like at ease around him. And, you know, to be above board since Swami well, doesn't remember. Um, Turuk is a deity. And he's kind of helped the group so far with certain things. Um, and he's given them weapons and a bag of holding like he gave you. Uh, he's a really funny, 
gregarious guy. But he's he's basically watching intently that everything that's happening on Kryn with the dragon attacks and all that. He's very focused on what's going on in town. So yeah, no, I've, I've I've read that too in the notes that dragons are coming or something like that. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> You're like just one <laughs> shit. Well, let me tell you, I I've been reading the sessions kind of planning pr from session to session, so I don't really know how the module ends. But there was some stuff coming up where I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right, okay. Um, so, yeah, you, like, Swami kind of whispers in your ear, hey, that's a really powerful item. By the way, Taruk, he may have been trying to swindle you, but he's actually a pretty powerful uh, deity, you know, and he's helped us out. Uh, we saw him from time to time. So he's a good guy. And you, well, do get that, weird. you do get that feeling from him that he's just like a nice person or whatever. Yeah. So uh, odd. Well, some deities are very odd. Some of them uh, are, you know, whatever. Um, so you guys are done with that. And um, you guys have to go see... The next action is to go see Tatina Rukadas. Remember? Everybody yeah, was paid to see... Way. Now there's a side gate out of town. Do you guys want to go that through the side gate? Or do you want to go out like a main gate? Like, there's a way that you could sneak out of town. Do we have to sneak out of town? No, I mean, not really sneak. That's probably the wrong word. It's like you're just using a side, side, you know, door to go out, or you can go out a main gate. Oh. It just depends on how you want to leave town. I don't know. Whatever, wherever's quicker, I guess. Yeah, there's a side gate that's actually pretty close to where you are, and there's guards. Uh, all Martok has to do is show his, you know, his papers, and they will allow him through because he's a knight. The, All right, cool. Well, a, I say the side gate. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to say my vote is on the side gate. Or, I don't know. Swami, are you okay with it? Is. You're with the side gate too? Mm -hmm. So um, you guys are going down the road. This is basically to Eskerbrook. You guys were given like a really rough map of where to find this um, inventor slash um, engineer. Um, yeah. Remember the name was Tatico, uh, Tatina Rukeldust, just to remind you. Yeah. Um, Tatina yeah, is there a uh, order you guys want to march in, or are you guys just heading down the road? Uh, I usually stick to the back of the group since I'm the anti-social one. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Martok <laughs> usually takes lead. Swami, unless you want to take lead, I'll put Martok in head of the. Yeah, seeing as Martok, you know, ain't here, I'll take lead. Oh, you want to take lead? Yeah. Okay. Um. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna. Um, you guys are kind of walking, and it's really uneventful. It's um, hang on, let me see if I could do this. If this hap if this works. Do you guys hear the the forest music now? I changed the yep. music. You don't hear? Yeah, it I hear. Yeah, I hear it. Okay. I hear the booms and stuff. Yeah. I know. I was gonna say, why don't I throw here hammers for change? Well, the thing is, there's like an atmosphere block they call it, so you could save music and sound effects. So like, if there's an ambush okay. and you guys are in the woods, you can save that and put it on like a marker, and I can activate the marker to start that up and change music. So oh, okay. And I can do I can do it on and off. So I can. So now you guys should just be in the woods. You should just hear birds chirping and stuff like that. Is what I hear. Yeah. I'm just trying to work out all these technical details. Uh, cause oh, I, I got yeah. yeah Do you hear cool. it, Swami? You hear the trees? Yeah, this is pretty dope. This is pretty dope. Yeah, like yeah, I said, I'm just cool. trying to work all this out. I, I tried to do a dry run, and it didn't work, and it crashed last time, and nobody heard anything. And I was like, son of a bitch. I did all this planning. and um, So hmm. you guys are kind of walking through the woods. I'm just going to move you guys because I can do it as a group. I'm just going to do you guys. Um, which is pretty cool that I can move as a group. You guys are just kind of walking. <laughs> you guys are just kind of walking. And uh, do you guys want to talk at all? Like, it's really just a quiet walk through the woods. In fact, all you guys, if you're, I don't think anybody's missing any hit points or anything, but like, you're basically taking a short rest right now. So if you want to click on your character sheet, say short rest, you know, I don't think anybody's missing any hit points. I think you guys are all rested up. Yeah, but we'll you can do that. Um, if you want to, because you guys are just kind of like through the woods. Martog's like reading the scroll that um, uh, Trinity gave him, you know, and he's like, oh, and uh, you see um, as they're walking, Uriel is just kind of checking. He's got this crystal scimitar, you know, and it's like almost see through and it's kind of looking like the sky right now, the same color as the sky. And he's like checking the blade on it and everything as you guys are walking. Uh, you guys can talk to each other while you're on the road. Like I said, it's pretty relaxing. You know, nothing, you know, uh, a bear isn't going to jump out or anything right now. Unless you piss me off. 
And then it looks at you, he's like, oh, sorry, sir, sorry. <laughs> like, walks away. <laughs> you good, no, Swami? You don't want to... No, I'm good. I want to stay on high alert because I'm in front of the pack. Do you want to Do you want to check your dagger out or anything? Or No, not quite yet. Not okay. quite yet. While we're in the forest, I'm trying to... Okay. Um, as you guys kind of reach this... I can still move you, too, which is pretty great. Um, let's see what it is. I think I oh, can... that's cool as hell. I just realized in my inventory, there's a whole slot for bag of holding, too. Yeah, so, or, like, you can put... You can literally take your backpack and just shove it in your bag of holding. So you don't... You don't have to even carry your backpack. It's just a way for you to travel lighter, you know? And it's great for... Loot. Is what? How do I just move the backpack to it, then? Uh, you should be able to click on the backpack, and it'll say, like, move, delete, or whatever. And then say, like, move to bag of holding. Oh, okay. You have to equip the bag of holding. It's got to be there's a red dot on it or a red square you got to click on. And then you should be able to click on the backpack and it'll say delete or move. And you can say move to bag of holding. It'll just suck everything in your backpack into your bag of holding. If it isn't working, I'd have to mess with it a bit. But I trust you. I mean, you know. I'm, I'm just looking around. It's, it's fine. I guess, I guess my character is just investigating the bag of holding while we're walking. Yeah, you're like, holy crap. Like, you start putting your, you're like putting all your stuff in there. Like, it just keeps going. Uh, you're kind of blown away. Swami, so, mean, you see him, like, without rolling anything, you see him messing with the bag of holding. Do you have, like, a response? Because he's, like, putting his backpack in it, pulling his backpack out, putting his backpack in it, pulling it out. And he's like, whoa. You know, like, it's just. Are you having fun there? Oh, yeah. This thing's cool. <laughs> The most sarcastic, yeah, I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, what do you want? Um, yeah, no, do your thing. I'm, I'm checking out my bag of holding. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, as you guys kind of get to the end of this trail, you hear just a massive boom. You hear a boom, and you hear just... Do either of you guys speak goblin? Uh, nope. Okay. You hear this weird... Just like guttural, like, and like you just, like a drunk murloc in World of Warcraft. You just hear this weird noise and you hear another boom. And you, you hear, Brah! and you just hear like some screaming. And uh, I think, oh, whoops, I can get you guys to hear. Whoops, I'm trying to move everybody at once. As you guys get, we're just going to do this. As you guys get to right at the edge of the field, you, I'm going to pull out. Uh, from you, guys. you guys see, uh, I can't really move the camera that much. I don't want to. You see this big house here. I'm going to zoom the camera by. You see this big house. You see, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You see a gnome inventor. I put her on top of the window, but she's actually inside the window. Otherwise, she would have fell through. And you see her <laughs> like, you ain't getting in. I don't care if you have a letter. I don't even know who you are. No, we are closed today. And she closes the flap. And um, you see these goblins out here. And they're all yelling at each other. And this one right here. Swami, are you seeing this? Mm -hmm. He's like, Rah! just screaming. And all the goblins are like running up. to, And they're trying to climb on everything. Like they're on their way running up trying to climb up the walls. And you see, um, you see the window open again, and she's like, "Piss off!" And the window closes again, and all these goblins are trying to climb up the, um, the they're trying to climb up the walls. But yeah, like I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You see archers right here. You see one spellcaster goblin. You see some guys holding some daggers in these weird. Whoops! I'm gonna try to move. You see these? Uh, they got like burlap like clothes they have daggers on them you see like these little guys with like swords just a lot of little nasty little goblins and you see them they're trying to climb up the walls um as you guys are like looking there's a sign right here right here on the thing that says uh Tatina's lab right here on the door and you see these goblins trying to climb up like they're trying to climb up the walls you know they're trying to like they're trying to boost each other up to get to the second story. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Well, shoot, we gotta, we gotta blast that mage. 
<laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a very good strategy, actually. If you no, were... he gotta go, he gotta go. The mage, that mage goblin, whatever, he gotta go. Okay, uh, can you guys roll initiative for me? Yep. Fifteen. Ten. All right. So fifteen. So Swami, just to let you know, you got. Uh, we'll go to turn base mode. Mm, Swami got the first one. Then it was. Uh, hang on. Sorry, Swami. Uh, well, you know who what your guy looks like. I'm not. I was gonna rename him, but it doesn't matter. Swami, and then it was. Um, Sorry, what did you get, O'Grady? I got a 10. Oh, yeah, that's you then. You're next. Then it is... Um, it was um, <clears throat> Uriel. And then it was Martok. And what I'm going to do to just make this easy, since there's so many enemies, I'm going to go in groups. So I'm going to do the mage first, and then I'm going to do the archers, and I'm going to do the rogues, and then I'm going to do the warriors. Um, so we'll go... And actually, I'll do this. He's like the leader. He's there. His name's Brinky. And yes, I named him Brinky. Um, Spellcaster. Then you got the archer. Then you got an archer there. You got uh, the rogues. Rogue guy there. Rogue guy there. Then you got... Rogue guy there. Then you got um, this guy. And this guy. And we will apply the turn order. So, Swami, it's your turn first. There is this mage. You see him, like, redding. Like, he's like... And he's, like, red. He looks... He looks like... Like, with your arcane knowledge and everything, this guy isn't doing a lot of damage, but you don't... Uh, unless you want to make an arcana check, you really don't know what he's doing. Um, but this dude, the... Um, He's like a knoll kind of leader. Oops, let me get the camera down so people can see him. He's kind of like, he's really dangerous. Like he, he's like got, you see blades stuck in his backpack, like swords and spears. And he's got two short swords like in his hand. And he's like, ah, yeah, yeah. And he's like yelling and stuff, you know, at everybody. And they're just like trying to climb up the wall. And, um, but it's your turn first. So what do you want to do? Can I do, can I, can I do that our kind of check on homeboy? Oh, on the, the mage to see what he's doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and give me a recon check. Oh, God. Fine. I don't know shit. <laughs> he is casting some sort of spell. <laughs> okay. All right. Five. All right. We're about to do Chaos Bolt. My level two spell on him. Okay. Let me know what that does. I, it's been a while. Okay, so... I launch an attack at him, right? Mm-hmm. And I do a... Ranged attack, I think, right? Yep, 120 feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can where hit him. I have, where I have to um, roll a uh, D8 mm -hmm. to see if I do either acid, cold, fire, force, lightning, right. poison. Any of those? Yeah, psychic or thunder. So I'm going to mm -hmm. do that one. Okay. Gonna... Oh, hang on. You know what? Mm -hmm. I think I did something here. Hang on. Oh, let's do this. There we go. You hear that? Oh, magic. Yeah. Ready? How about the bone? Uh, 21. Yes, okay. that hit him. All right. Um, damage. What Six. kind of damage? I'm going to I'm gonna do that right now. I'm going to do the D8. Um, oh. it, it's going to be acid. Oh, okay. Acid damage. You, Six points of acid damage. You, like, hurl this, like, black bolt of energy at him, you know? And it gets him and explodes, and you see the acid hit him, and he screams. His spell goes away. Uh, yeah, he doesn't look great. He doesn't look great. Um, do you guys hear the music? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, the, the goblin battle. If you hear it, it's pretty funny. They just have, like, grunts, and the last one's like, ah! Um, all right. It's your turn, Fade. What do you want to do? Oh, Grady, what do you want to do? Well, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to take my wild shape. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds good. I got to click I gotta click one of them boxes, right? Yep. Once. And then I'm going to use it to turn into an ape. Holy crap. 
Is that a jungle creature though, or is that an actual forest creature? Because remember, you. Can... Uh, it, it came up in forest. Oh, okay, okay, just making sure. Uh, yeah. I don't know if there's a cool-looking ape, so you're gonna look kind of. That's fine. He does a lot of damage. We're just gonna put him here. You and I'm gonna keep your, you know, your whatever there, so I know you're there. So yeah, you're right here. So if you see on the stream, oh, you have 30 feet of movement. Let's do yep. this. So where do you wanna? Uh, the closest goblin. How far away is that? Uh, the closest goblin from you is... Oh, here we go. You are... Uh, the closest goblin is 71 feet oh. from you. All right, you well, I guess I'm going to run 30 feet for now. <laughs> Could you only... Is your move speed when you're an 8? <clears throat> is it uh, 30 feet or whatever? Yeah, it's at 30 feet. Okay, so I'm going to put You can also your... climb up at 30 feet, too, as well. Yeah, if there's, like, a climbing service. I'll put you right here. I don't care if it's, like, 30.8. You can also take... Your action, do they have anything else like a dash? I'm really not that familiar with the uh, ape. Uh, I don't think so, no. Okay, so if you take your action, um, you, you can rock a ranged attack that goes up to 25 to 50 feet. Oh, yeah, you could hit him from here. He's, yeah, uh... so. so yeah, I guess I'll, I'll uh, throw a rock He's at him. He's 30 feet from you. He's 30 feet from me? Yeah, this dude. The main guy. You want to throw a rock at him? Give me yep, a ranged, uh, ranged attack there. Throw him. All right. How do I do that on here? Uh, you may just have to look at this stat block and give me a custom roll. Okay, you're right. Um, plus five to hit. Mm -hmm, so just give and me a d20 and then add five to it. Do a custom roll of a d20 and then just add five. All right. So, 18? That definitely hit. I mean, his armor is, you know, he's whatever, but his armor ain't that great. Um, you just rip this stone out of the ground and hurl it at him, and he he gets rocked, and he drops one of his short swords, and he's like, ah! And you see, like, his head is, like, not looking good. How much damage did you do? Uh, how do I roll for that? Oh, it does, oh, hold on. It says it does, uh, six damage. Or plus do you want five. to roll? Does it say like 1d6 plus whatever? Or... Um, uh, 1d6 plus 3. Do you so want to roll do or do you want to take the medium? No, I'm going to roll. Okay. So I got a six, 6. There you go. Plus 5. Or no, plus 3. Plus 3, my bad. So 8, eight all together. 5 plus 3. He, it looks like he uh, is... Nine. Oh, 6. 9. Yeah. So he looks like he's not doing great. Like you could custom. Like it goes. The rock hits his head. And he goes ah, and he like drops a blade, and then he just turns to look at you. Um, it's uh, it's Uriel's turn. He's gonna run up and be incredibly uncreative because he's not <laughs> here, and he's gonna. He's going to just, he saw that you were attacking that one, and he's just going to cast a fireball at it. So I'm going to roll really here on the screen. Um, you see it just go wide. Even with his bonuses, he, like, channels the energy and, like, flings it at him, and it just goes right past him. So it's Martok's turn. Martok runs up, again, 30 feet, and does uh, Eldritch Blast, so he channels this energy and just shoots it out. If I remember right, Eldritch Blast is 1d10. Uh, let's see if he hits. That's a hit. And 1d10. You see him just, uh, like this big energy bolt goes towards the thing and it knocks the guy's backpack off and he screams. He's not doing great. And he 
Uh, and it's his turn, so he runs up because he's within 30 feet, and he attempts to hit Martok with his uh, short sword, and he definitely missed. So that's his turn. So it's the Goblin Spellcaster turn. He casts um, Eldritch Blast. You see him do the same thing that Martok did, cast this, like, black energy and shoot it forward and it looks like he's going for the door. He's trying to blow the door open. He hits. He wants in there. He really wants in there. He really wants in there. What an idiot. Um, you see like it blasts a hole in the door but he missed like knocking the hinges off so the door is actually kind of exposed right now. Um, it hits like right right here on the hinge side. Um, but that's his turn. One of the archers, uh, who is shooting up at the house, he, uh, he turns around and he, he takes a shot at, um, <clears throat> at Uriel because Uriel is like the closest. So he's going to attempt to shoot him. Missed. The next goblin archer's turn. He runs over this way. And he's going to attempt to shoot um, Martok. Yeah, you got a natural one. He missed. And this rogue just runs forward. And then he uses his uh, dash bonus action. And he goes another 30 feet that way. And that's his turn. This guy moves forward. He goes... 30, and then he runs, and he's just shy of Uriel or anybody. There's one more road. He's going to run. I'm just going to say 60, because he's going to do the same thing. Right there. The warrior, he can't do that. He's going to run up. He's just running up to the guys. The next one. They're all just kind of running into position because you guys made so much noise. They abandoned trying to get into the house. Yeah. It's your turn, Swami. Sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say, Faith? Were you going to say something, Faith? Oh, I was just saying, good. Get their attention off of this. Uh, the house. This You're going to firebolt the mage? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, roll the hit, man. 21. 21? It's question marks in my... Oh, there you go. Roll for damage. <laughs> okay. You know, that actually did... I mean, you burned a big chunk in his cloak, and he drops... Uh, like, he had, like, an arcane focus in his hand. He drops it, but he... Like, he turns around and looks at you. So he was looking at the house, but you got, like, the back of his shoulder, you know? And he's like... Ah! And he just, like, gets really pissed off. Uh... Oh, Grady, it's your turn as a massive ape that you are. Um, well, I guess I will run up 30 feet toward the mage. Okay. The mage is 80 feet away. So okay, so feet. just er just up to 30 feet. Oh, you want to throw something at him, probably? Yep. Okay, right there. And then I'm going to do another rock throw. And it works. So you see where you're trying to hit right here. Uh, and then for the rock throw, I do. Oh yeah, I gotta roll the d20. You have the custom d20. You get plus four or something? Uh, it says uh, plus five to hit, range twenty-five oh. to fifty. Feet. You're fine. So yeah, just roll d20 and then add plus five. All right. I got seventeen. Yeah, that hit. He's a uh, yeah. yeah, lowly. Yeah. All right, so now I roll for damage, which is 1d6 plus 3. A 4, so 7. Uh, he looks like he is hang Like, you throw the rock, it crushes his throat. It, like, hits him in the throat. He's like... Oh, oh, and you see him, like, blood just, like, falls out of his mouth. He does not look like he's in a good way. Um, Are you going to yet? Do what? He's not dead yet? I mean, he's hanging on by 
a finger, a pinky right now. So maybe he won't be casting any more of them. Well, he's not gonna like you crush his throat. You need to speak to cast a spell. Even you know that. So you're like, well, he's kind of uh, taken care of. Um, <laughs> Uriel is just gonna slash at this one in front of him with his scimitar. He hit. Um, his scimitar, I'll just say, does one d ten. Probably not right. But he ain't here. Don't that. You see him just skewer this one right in the stomach, just stab it in the stomach, and it just, he's like, it's its a goblin, so it's like hanging off his sword, and he like flicks it off, you know? Um, uh, it's Martok's turn. He's just going to swing it, uh, Blinky, Brinky over here, uh, with his, um, his uh, blade, his great sword or whatever. He hit. He didn't need much to hit. Where's the dice? Oh, there oh man. Since the shots you guys have taken at the leader, he just, like, cleaves his short sword through his uh, great sword, and it just becomes two halves. Brinky is no more. He is, um, oh, he was a over here. Yeah, right here. He just annihilates him. Just gone. So he's dead. So you got the spellcaster. He doesn't look good, but Swami, you hit him last. He's going to try to do the same thing to you. He's going to cast Firebolt on you. I thought he couldn't talk. Oh, that's right. He's, like, uh, stumbling forward, and you see him just... Uh, he doesn't look in a good way. In fact, I'm going to have his movement. And he's just stumbling here, and he's like, <laughs> and he's like waving his dagger, at like the whatever, and everybody kind of ignores him, and they're going to try to, they're like, I don't know what you're saying right now. Um, so he's going to attempt, this goblin here is going to move forward. He, since you crushed his throat, O'Grady, he's going to attempt to shoot you. What is your AC right now, being a, uh, uh, an ape? Uh, oh, my AC is an ape. Should be in the top. 12. 12? Okay. Yep. He got exactly a 12. Uh, um, <laughs> but I do baseball rules. So if it's a tie, you beat it. So tie goes to the defender is my rule. So you just right. missed it. That's my house rule. Um, so we're going to go to the next archer. So it just missed. You, you see it go past your shoulder, the one arrow. This guy comes forward and he's he's kind of mad at you, Swami. So he's gonna attempt to shoot at you. Uh, he got a natural four, so even with his plus one, I don't think he's gonna hit you. His arrow goes wide. The rogue is next. He's gonna attempt to run. Thirty feet, and he has a uh, bonus action. He's gonna come right up to Uriel and try to swipe at him with a dagger. And even with the nine, he doesn't hit. So that's his turn. This goblin is going to do the same thing. He's going to run up, but he's going to run up to you, Swami. So he's got 30 feet of movement right there. And then he's going to take a bonus action. He's going to dash another 30 feet. He's going to try to attempt to swipe at you with the dagger. So what's your AC? 14, unless you do the shield. Oh, I'm always doing the shield. Always doing the shield, but it's 15. 15. 15, and I'm doing my shield. Well, he got a natural one, so don't use your shield. <laughs> he oh, got a natural right. one, so don't waste right. your shield. Um, so this goblin warrior, he doesn't have as much movement as these. He's going to go the 30 feet here, and then he's going to take his whole action and go another... Uh, 30, like right here, but he's right in front of Martok, so. Um, and the other one is... He's gonna run... Here. And, well, he's gonna be right on Martok. So they're both gonna be on Martok. Swami, it's your turn. Alright. Um... You got this one next to you, you know? You got the one with the daggers right next to you. Magic missile level one. So right to cast the range spell, he's right next to you. You're at disadvantage. Uh, I know it always hits, yeah. 
There's got to be some restriction. It's hard for you to channel the energy when there's someone with a dagger right next to you. Oh, okay. Um... I would say you just get reduced damage on the magic missile since they always hit. But it remember, if you have to cast a ranged spell, if someone's right up next to you, you you're at a disadvantage because they're kind of like blocking you and you have to like summon the energy and speak and make hand gestures, stuff like that. Okay, all right. Dagger plus one. The guy, the, the guy right in front of me. Roll for it, man. How do I do that one though? Can I give me like a... Should be on your... Did you equip it? You click the red dot so you, it's part of your action tab or whatever? Oh, okay, I see it. I see it. Yeah, if you click the red dot, it I should add it to your things you can do in combat. There you go. Plus oh, one damage. 17? Yeah, you hit him. Roll for damage. Is it like 1d4 plus something or there? Oh, see it. So you stab him right in the gut, and you see him just drop to a knee, and he's trying to hold in his intestines. He's not dead, but he can see it from where he's standing. So what I'll do is I will do status. He's knocked over. All right, O'Grady, it's your turn as your ape. Uh, attack, uh, how far away is the one to the left of me up on Martok? Um, here? The rogue? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I think I'm going to... Uh, he's only I'm just yeah, gonna... 10 feet away. All right, good. I'm going to run up on him, and I'm going to use my multi-attack. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, roll to hit, sir. Yes. Sir. What do you swipe, like punch him or whatever? What is the multi attack? I use. Uh, it says I use. Uh, I use two fists. Oh. Two fists of fists. Give me two rolls. Then. All right. Fist of fury. I mean, I w I don't want to get punched by an ape. That actually sounds really painful. <laughs> All right. All right. Eighteen. Eighteen. What? And then it's plus. Uh, what is it? Plus five. Oh yeah, you've totally hit him. Alright, and then the second one. Fifteen plus five. Twenty, yeah, so roll damage twice or whatever, whatever the damage is. Alright. Uh -oh. Plus three. No. Alright, one plus three, so four. it's four. And then the next one? Also, another four. So, how do you want to end this goblin rogue's life? You have punched him as an ape two times. Um, I don't know. I guess with the, the final attack, I'll just come in and sandwich his head with both my fists. Nice. Yeah, he just mm. keels over, man. Just, uh, I'll knock him down. I'll remember this dude when the purple is knocked down. But if you guys want to loot the bodies, I'll keep him here so that way you know where they are. If you want to, you know, if you want to. Uh, search the bodies, but he's incapacitated. Uh, it's Uriel's turn. He's going to attempt to stab at this rogue again with his scimitar. He missed. He just, like, the thing's so small, he swings at it and it ducks. Just enough for him to, like, lose his, you know, what he's, where he's at. Martok only has this one to contend to. He's going to rear up with his greatsword and try to swing it again, this uh, warrior. He misses again. These goblins are smaller than... They're literally small creatures, so they're smaller than what you guys have fought before. He swings, and the thing just, like, dips down a little bit, and the grids are just goes right over the top of it. Just totally misses it. But this caster, uh, he it's he's next, but he ain't looking good, guys. He just is... All he's doing is stumbling forward. I'm going to have his movement here. Close enough. He's right there, and he's on his knees, and he's like, oh, because you crushed his throat with that rock you threw at him. He's not doing good. That's his turn. Um, this archer, though, is going to attempt to shoot at uh, you, O'Grady. He's going to... What's your AC? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I know I asked, but what's your AC? That's 12. 12? Okay. He got a 13 on the dice, so don't worry. Arrow's going to do that much. Four. Four points of damage. So, again, right. did you add your temporary or whatever so you know what you got and all that? Yep, I got and, that all set. And then you got, like, here. the two from the berries and all that, so you got all that written down or whatever? Yep, I okay. got it up over here. Just making sure. Uh, four? Yeah, it was four points total. 
it like All sinks right. in and you I mean as an ape I would imagine four points of damage you would just get angry yep <laughs> like, not too happy yeah. so this guy gets mad Swami he's really mad at you this archer so he's gonna move this way he's gonna take a shot right here Swami he's taking a shot at you because you you uh, hurt his friend He got a 19 on the dice. Do you want to use Boom. your shield? Pop your shield. Yep. What's uh? So what's your total AC? Is it 19? Yeah, 19. Yeah. So it just you see like you you summon your shield and you see the arrow just fling off the side of it. So now okay. now your shield's just hovering. You can command it wherever you want it. You know, it's like okay. uh, battle. Whatever. Can't think of the whatever. Okay. So this guy's gonna swing at Uriel. They're having a real pissing contest right now. He got an 18 on the dice. He hit. Uriel doesn't have a shield or anything like that. You see him stab Uriel, and it just kind of hits his brand new armor. You see a little bit of blood, but Uriel, it just seems that Uriel is getting incredibly mad. Um, then uh, this other rogue. Oh, this. So Swami, it's his rogue's turn. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, not, I'm as a reaction. I'm gonna let you use your reaction. But it's the rogue's turn that's kneeled in front of you, trying to hold his guts in. Do you just want to finish him off? I mean, is it my turn? Yeah. I mean, it isn't. But I'm giving you a reaction. It's his turn. But he's not gonna be able to do anything. Well, you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna try to crawl away from you, holding his guts in at the same time. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have his movement. So he's, he's like slowly trying to. Hang on. Let me move that camera he's slowly trying to crawl away from you so he's right there but that was his turn but since right, he moved well, out of the, your direction you do have an opportunity to attack so you want to try to stab him with your dagger again yeah all right right right, right now yeah just roll because you get a reaction as he's moving right, away so, from you um, ten. yeah that's enough he doesn't i mean he doesn't really have any armor or anything uh roll for damage Thanks. Yeah, you just stab him in the back and he just falls over. Like, And he basically ends up where he is here. Just big pool of blood around him and everything. Oh. Uh, okay. And the warrior, he's... Okay, he's down, so we'll go to the next one. He's going to swing at Martok again. He's got his uh, short sword out. He got a natural two on the dice that isn't enough. Swami, it's your turn. Alright, boom, um... Mag magic Missile, um, level one. I'm gonna go for the archer, dead in front of me, and then to the mage to the left of him. Okay, and you get one and more, also, right? also, yeah, also, the archer... Back here? Um, yeah, all okay. three of those. So the archer here, so just roll for damage. Okay, so we got five, two, two. So, right, so I'm going to do five for the archer all the way to the left. Okay. And then two and two for the mage and the archer right in front of me. So I feel like the mage should be done. Oh, yeah. Uh, your magic missile basically just vaporizes. Like, you just see goblin bones when the magic missile hits him. It just, it's almost, it's a force spell. So you just see, like, his skin blow off, and it's like, all that's left of him on his knees is like a skeleton, and it just falls over. Okay, he done. Um, all so the mage done. What about the, the, the second archer? He looks okay. Like, it winged him, because you did two to him. He hasn't been hit yet. So, okay. he, he looks like he's alright. But this guy... Back here, the archer here with five. He doesn't look like he's doing great. Like you see, like a big, like he's just bleeding out of his really crappy armor right, right now. Boom. But uh, O'Grady, it is your turn. All righty. So who do we got around me now? You got this dude here. You got this guy right there. And you got the archer here, pretty much. I'll you know, move the camera. How far away is that archer from me? Let's More than thirty see. feet. Uh. Uh, uh, you're close. You're close. I'd say you're, 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 you're there. Yeah. Yeah, you're thirty. So it's like thirty point one. And... So you can run up on him and punch him if you want. All right, good. I'm gonna run up on him and do the multi attack. All right, let me uh get the swing camera around a bit. Okay. Okay, you're gonna run up. 
and just go and do the multi attack on him. Give me some rolls. Yep. Alright, so let me give you the rolls. So I got B. That's oh, that's whoa, a that's 20. a nat twenty. Plus, plus the five. Well, and you got a nat twenty, so that doubles your damage anyway. Oh, nice. And then four, so I'm gonna die. So the four didn't hit, but the nat 20 kind of makes up for it. So roll for damage and then just double everything you get. So like if you get a total of 10, then it's 20. So uh, I got uh, so nine. Okay, so that's 18 points of damage. There's other ways to do crits. I'm going to, I keep forgetting, I'm going to talk to my group. There's a way to do like critical, critical. So it like does more damage, but it works on the mm. players as well. So I'll, I'll research that. But you basically, how do you want to end the life of this archer? Because you basically just doubled the amount of hit points he did in damage. Uh, well, then I just grab him by the top of the head and punch him in the throat and knock his body off from his, uh, <laughs> from his head. So I'm going to do this. He moves. I'm just going to knock him 15 feet this way. And then I'm just gonna, gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's dead. Um, I just toss his head to the side. Okay. Uh, it's Uriel's <laughs> turn. Uh, Uriel's gonna just hopefully kill this thing. They've been like, ha, ha, like missing each other. Uh, he missed. Um, it's Martok's turn. He gets really mad since he missed this thing and he just stabs down with his greatsword. You got a 17 on the dice. Well, they only give me one. Oh, you see him just like he gets so mad he cleaves down and he skewers this thing like a kebab. So it goes through the goblin's neck and then through his torso. And he just lifts <laughs> he just lifts it up and throws it off his sword. So this thing is uh, I kind of zoomed in a bit right here, but it he throws it a couple feet, we'll say five feet, and then it's down to it. Uh, it's this, oh, the spellcaster's down. Uh, wasn't one archer down? That archer's dead. That archer's still around. Swami, he's mad that you killed his friend. He's gonna try to kill you. He's gonna, what's your total AC? Is it, is it 19 now? 19. Okay, well, he's gotta get a 19, right? making sure he did not it just wings off your uh, wings off your shield oh that was him uh, this guy is gonna try to swing at Uriel again he hits for two points of wait hang on one point of damage yeah you see him stab Uriel it's really it's a little bit of damage but it's just pissing Uriel off at this point and I think this rogue... Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he's uh, dead. dead. That guy's dead. I mean, everybody's pretty much dead, except for all that's left, it's, it would seem, is this one archer that hasn't been knocked over. Or the archer and the, the rogue that are near uh, Yuri all right here. So, Swami, it's your turn. What about that archer way back over there by the door? Oh, he's still around. You see, he doesn't... It's like he can't hear... And he's actually still um, trying to, like, shoot at the door with the hinges. Oh, fireball. Okay. Roll. I missed. Seven. That missed. It, like, hits the wall right behind him. Uh, it's your turn, O'Grady. There's this All dude. right. Yeah, there's a dude that you, you're right here. Sorry, you're right there. Yeah. I'll run up 30 feet toward that archer. Yep. Right here. Up by the door. Yep. I'll say you're right there. You're, I mean, you're so close. Um, you could throw a rock at him, and you you wouldn't be a disadvantage. So you can't hit. I him. would be. A, I if you want, I wouldn't be able to. You can't punch him because you're more. You're like ten more feet away. But mm -hmm. um, unless you have a dash action or something, again, I'm not used to the ape, ape stab ones. No, I, I don't got it. You could throw like a rock. That. I mean, there's rocks all over the ground. You can just pick up a rock and throw it at him. You wouldn't be a disadvantage to do that. All right, then that's what I'm gonna do. The far rock. Is it plus four? So, I'm looking right now. Uh, it's plus three to my uh, okay. D6. Yeah, so roll a D20 but, and then add plus three. Um, oh, for that it's it is plus five. Oh, okay. So eighteen plus yeah, five. Yeah, you hit him. Uh, roll for damage. Uh, 
And then I got a six plus three, so that's nine. When you throw the rock, usually I'll, I'd let you do it, but you basically knock his head off. Like his head just pops out and goes flying one way, and the rock just goes through him. So All right. Out. Got him. <laughs> You're like, that's a strike. Um, that's, that's what, that's three kills now I got now? Yeah, three kills. Swami, are you gonna are you gonna fire him after this combat encounter? Or? I know how you feel about that. Uriel just stabs this thing. I'll roll damage. Yeah, he stabs this thing, and you see him just—it's a clean cut with his crystal uh, scimitar, and you see the thing just fold in half. So it's basically two halves right now. Uh, so that's that one. So the only one that's left is this archer here. It's Martok's turn, though. He's going to run up and just try to smack this thing with his greatsword because he's very mad. Let's see if he does it. He hits. With his bonuses, again, you see him. The thing has its arms up, and when he cuts it, he basically cuts it from, like, the chest up and cuts it diagonally. So, like, the top half of it just slides off. <laughs> uh, and well, let's do this. I don't know if I can like um, try to. We'll do this. Nope. Turn. So combat is over. Hopefully you guys don't hear the music. I turned it off. Boom. Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys are all done. All these goblins are laying dead. Um, you guys, after you kill the last goblin, you hear another boom from the lab. You see the window open, and you see this weird, like, uh, brass ball with, like, weird wings fly out of the... Um, fly out of the uh, of the window that was closed up here and um, it follows along the field and comes right to like where basically you guys are standing right about here where everybody's kind of standing and you see it's got like it stops and the wings are flapping like a hummingbird and it's just this brass ball with bolts in it and you see it slide open and you see like a little telescope eye and you hear out of it, it's like, who are you? What do you want? And it's like a megaphone, you know, you hear it like reverberate a little bit. Stay your business. This, uh, yeah, what do we want? What do you mean? We just cleaned up this whole thing out here for you. Um, oh, Grady, do, you want, do you want to turn back we into your whatever? Or? Yeah, yeah. I can't talk while I'm an ape. I'm just going to. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put you over here so we know, you know, you're about right here. Kill the ape. Yeah, you're here. You see this thing like fly kind of about. I'm going to move the camera a little bit. So, yeah, it flies right in between you guys. Swami, you like walk up. Actually, you know what I'll do is I'll do exploration mode. There we go. So, you guys don't have to worry about movement and all that. You see it right about here. And it's like, state your business. Uh, we got this. Uh, man, what the hell is that damn thing? We got this thing for you. <laughs> it's a gear. It was like a gear. Yeah, the gear. That's what it was. We got this gear. We were told to bring it to you. So, it's, do you hold the gear out of your bag? You're still messing with your bag and holding. You're like, whoa! I just found it. You pull the gear out or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Just like, oh, here it is. Um, do you hold it out? Yeah, I hold it out. And so the show thing, her. the thing flies over there, and you see it like look up and down. You know, and you hear gears like look up and down, and then the uh. thing flies up, like the brass ball flies up. It doesn't grab it or anything. It just flies up and goes in the window. And uh, mm. you hear, like, you know, without with your guys' perception, you hear, gum, 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 downstairs, gum, gum, gum. And then the door just explodes open, and you see Tatina Rooka thus come out, and she leaps down here. She's like, and you see on her head, I'm going to zoom in really quick so you guys do this. So you see her here, and she looks around at all the dead goblins. She's like, 
And she's got like one of those jeweler, like magnifying glass eye things on, but it's really long. And you see it moving like a gear, and she's looking at you guys. And it's on both sides, and it's like moving back and forth. And she's like, Are you guys mages? Or are you with the knights? And she like, looks back and forth. I don't know if you know. Oh. I He's... recently signed up with the mages. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. She goes, can I see the gear? Oh, uh, sure. She like, so looks, to she grabs it and she holds it like, you know, she has like gloves on and she's looking at it and her little telescope things like, zzz, zzz, zzz. and she's like, oh, that son of a bitch. And she like, she goes, who's your superior? Where did you get this? And she's like looking between you guys. I found. Yeah, I actually found this when I was uh, helping my buddy Max. You see her like put her head up, and she like takes the goggles, you know, and puts them on her head, you know. So she's looking at you with her real eyes, and she's like, "You find it in the woods? Something like that? In some ruins? Something like that? Damn it!" <laughs> And then she looks, she goes, who are you? And she looks right at you, Swami. And I introduce myself. Oh. She's like, oh. Uh, she's like, I'm so sorry. She's like, Swami, I do apologize. It's just, I don't like to see it when people steal my stuff, you know? Um, she goes, are you guys part of the mages or the knights? I mean, I need to talk to somebody in charge. Maybe somebody at Calamine? Uh, well, I recently we were signed here. up with the mages, but... I but what? Spit it out! Of them. Can't get a hold of them? Mm-mm. I wouldn't know how you can get a hold of them. I mean, we could go back to town. Wait right here. I got something to show them anyway. And you see, you know, she runs in the house. You just hear a ruckus of movement through the house. And you see her come out, and she has a big backpack, like two of your backpacks before you had the bag of holding like strapped to each other and there's all these weird devices on it and like piping strapped through it and you see like a little motor on the back and it's just chugging spitting out steam she's like well you guys know the quickest way back to calamine i know a quicker way but i need to talk to your superiors this is bullshit oh, oh okay then <laughs> she's like i just hate it she's like i just really hate it when things are stolen. So, uh, I know we're running out of time. So that's where we're going to leave it. You guys are going to head back to Calamine. You're going to report everything that what you saw. And uh, she basically has your gear, O'Grady, just to let you know. So she's in possession of it right now. All right. So you guys are headed back to Calamine. <laughs> <laughs>